Welcome back to another episode of PTV. I'm Lydia Walker. And I'm Hallie Jerby. Lydia, do you ever get an unsettling feeling when you hear sirens going off around town? Yes, it's always concerning to hear them, knowing that someone could be in need of emergency assistance. Although no one ever wants to hear those sirens, we're fortunate to live in a community full of dedicated people who work hard to help us in times of need. To put their training to the test, several organizations came together to hold a mock disaster drill. Michael Vanderveen was there to bring us this report. To help first responders prepare for an emergency, 10 PHS students joined in with Amber Wave for a mock disaster drill. There were 10 people from the KAY club that each had a different injury for the EMS to practice knowing what to do. And I had a head trauma injury. It was a mock disaster drill, um, and it's a good chance for us to practice our incident command and mass casualty incidents um, for the EMS side of things. So basically it's a made up drill. The scenario was that Amber Wave had an explosion and it gives us the opportunity and then all the other entities to practice their duties um, when an actual disaster happens. Overall, the event was a success for cooperation between the different emergency services. I think it was an excellent way for us to get practice. Um, they all did very well. For something that we don't do very often and we don't get a practice very often, we worked very well as one united team. So not only was just EMS there, we had the Sheriff's Department there, we had the Fire Department on scene with us, as well as Amber Wave workers, and then you had the whole hospital system doing their drill as well. So getting all of those entities to work smoothly together is a big challenge and I thought we did really well this year. I thought it went very smoothly. Um, we learned a lot of things from it definitely, um, but it gave me a lot more confidence knowing that we're uh, very prepared for that type of incident if it did happen. For PTV, this is Michael Vanderveen. Hello and welcome to this episode of Hex Kitchen. I'm your host, James Ramsey. Today, we're having our contestants make the most fine, decadent desserts in all the land. Dirt cups. All right, our first contestant's Ethan. All right, do you know how to make this? Oh yeah, I've made this multiple times. It's actually a childhood dish of mine. We're gonna start with the Oreos. Okay. Does that make sense? You, know, you mm -hmm. get them crushed up. Are you dumping all of them in there, Ethan? Yes, yes, just, just let me cook. First got here, I really looked up to Mr. Ramsey, but as I went along, I realized that I'm smarter than him. So I don't think he's going to be an excellent role model to me anymore. Start mashing him up so that I don't have to worry about him in a bunch of eggs. What are you, an idiot? Why do you just have the cream in there? Because I don't want the cream. It's Oreo's got cream in them. My. My grandma mashes better than you, all right? Pick it up. My. Put it all in there. I thought you said you've made dirt cups before. I have. That's why I'm not listening to you. My grandma taught me how to make these when I was just a little jit, and I've been making them for many, many years. And it just really makes me feel disrespected of how he treated me um, during this uh, time I spent with him. See, no comment because I'm doing so good. No, there's no comment because I'm thinking how much of an idiot you are. <laughs> I have more milk. I just want to say that I've learned everything here from James, so... Um, you clearly weren't paying attention then. <laughs> you were sleeping in class. Can I stick the spoon in there? It's still warm. Then half a one for some reason. And then there you go. Um, Mr. Ramsey, I made this for you. It's a dirt cup with uh, some food in it. A first glance, I gotta say, it's not a dirt cup. That's a mud cup. There's no soil on top. When he said uh, mud cup, it really threw me for a loop. Taste. Get out. Get out. Get out. <laughs> I don't know which.
which is a bigger disaster, the mock drill or Ethan's dark pudding? I don't know, but after surviving the mock drill and Hex Kitchen, let's switch gears for something more uplifting. And nothing is more uplifting than looking to the skies for a story on Kansas Aviation Tour. Take a look. To spread excitement about aviation, the 2024 Kansas Air Tour visited Philsburg. Uh, it's a great engagement opportunity. So this is the 2024 Kansas Aviation Tour. It's a multi-stop event where we stopped at two airports, where it was scheduled for two airports every Friday in September. And it's an opportunity for uh, aviation engagement with the community. So pilots fly in, mechanics and FAA, uh, KDOT Aviation. We are all here to showcase aviation careers to our next generation, but also engage with the community and allow these airports to engage with uh, the community and then with their youth as well. We got to get kids into aviation and this is an amazing opportunity to do that. This event is a great opportunity for students to learn about aviation and possible careers. So the aviation tour is a, is a uh, event that allows for teenagers and uh, kids of all ages to be exposed to the aviation industry uh, in hopes that some point we can get some of these kids enrolled in aviation where they can uh, take place as, as pilots as well as uh, uh, maybe aviation mechanics or anything in the aviation field. Students of all ages received hands-on lessons about aviation. They're important to showcase aviation careers. Uh, aviation's in such high demand right now, and if people don't know about these careers, they won't go into these careers. So we're trying to showcase these uh, various careers to youth and anyone that's interested. That way they understand what's out there and understand the career path that they may potentially be interested in, and just come out and touch an airplane and look at an airplane and get an up close a look at these aircraft and talk to the pilots that fly them and talk to the aviation industry professionals that are in those career paths and have that direct uh, opportunity. The Kansas Air Tour also showcased the Fosbird Airport and its new improvements. Um, for us, what we want people to learn is how valuable your airport is to your community. Uh, not only is it just for your local pilots to use, but also for emergency uh, personnel. Uh, if you have a family member that gets sick and needs to be flown out, we have an airport that allows for that. Uh, it brings in an enormous potential as far as um, industrial use. Uh, Amber Wave and Tamco uh, utilize this airport, so um, there's a lot of benefits to having an airport in your community. For PTV, this is Don McGrath. I feel like vampires are really pale. <laughs> oh, yep. Yeah. I'll try not to get any in your eyes. Alright. <laughs> Dude, that's a lot. I don't understand, it's not really coming. It feels like it's everywhere. Just a little bit. Oh gosh. It smells like frosting. Mmm, it doesn't smell. I'm gonna have to put some on the lips too. Yes. Okay. I'm like a mad queen. Probably look like a drag queen. Get all the girls. Don't worry. Oh. Mm -hmm. Perfect. I think that's it. painting with frosting, that's a little wacky. Why not just use regular makeup? Where's the fun in that? We like to be a little out of the ordinary, maybe a little wacky with our fun features. Frost a Monster isn't the only wacky thing we have for today's show, as you'll see in this next segment. Take a look. 
last weekend, things got a little weird at the golf course. Um, wacky golf is kind of like golf, um, but just whack with wacky items. So they play all nine holes. Um, they have something like a tennis racket, a tennis ball, um, a birdie that they can hit with a tennis racket, um, a softball and a sock, um, a bunch of different wacky items. They also tee off differently. So they use a volleyball, a soccer ball. Um, then they also um, putt differently. So we'll have like a pool cue or you putt with your foot. And then we also have some side games. So a fun one is putt to win. Um, they pay $5 and they get two balls. And um, if they hit the prize when they putt, they win the prize. So it's a super fun game. And then we also have another side game, um, chip to win. And they chip a ball into a pool of sand. And if they get the ball in the pool, then they get half the pocket of money. At the end, there were many prizes for the contestants. Uh, so they had a big prize pool that you got to pick from. And I picked a chair. And then Ty had to leave, so he just got what was left, which I think was a karaoke machine. Wacky Golf isn't just about having fun. Uh, the purpose is to raise money um, during Match Your Money Month in October um, to raise money for Phillips County and our foundation. In their efforts, over $21,000 was raised at the event. For PTV, this is Caden Scurdy. Hello and welcome back to Hex Kitchen. I'm your host, James Ramsey. And today, we brought in a new contestant, Kaylin Fitzpatrick, to hopefully justify that atrocious failure that was the last thing. How big of chunks are we gonna put in our dirt pie? I like the Oreos bigger, because it just gives them more crunch. You gonna crunch them smaller or just leave it like that? And with the hands as well. Have you watched those? Yeah, I did. What is that whisking technique? Give it here, give it here. Like this. Mix it up, like that. Do it. What are we doing? It's not turning into foot. I'm at a loss for words, honestly. I didn't think anyone could do worse than what Ethan did last thing. But somehow, we found the single person who did worse. I made a dirt cup out of my family recipe. Well, your family must love winter. So this, I wouldn't call this a dirt cup. This is more like an avalanche. When you said that my dirt cup was like an avalanche or like winter, I was kind of offended because that's how me and my mom always make them. You got snow on top, liquid on the bottom. I wouldn't even say it's edible. Get out of my kitchen, you're done. Those dirt pudding cups, even though they're not quite right, are kind of making me hungry. Didn't you eat breakfast this morning? No. Maybe we should just eat breakfast together. Like breakfast buddies. Kind of. Something like you'll see in this next story. What goes well with pancakes and eggs in the morning? A buddy to eat them with. The KAY Club has brought back an old tradition, breakfast buddies. So we haven't done breakfast buddies in a few years, and so uh, Mrs. Sisson asked if we could start that again, and I think that is going to be a great addition to our morning routine um, with our students here at PES. This is a great opportunity for the high school students to talk to the elementary. I think it's been great. The kids really enjoy seeing the big, big kids from the high school, and they just really enjoy it in the mornings. The Breakfast Buddies program is not the only way students at PHS interact with the elementary school. We're doing High Five Friday so the kids will get pumped up for the game. This is the way to spread Panther pride around USD 325. I feel like they'll like, get more excited for games, especially home ones, because that's the only time we come down here. Along with high fives, elementary students receive a sweet treat. Hey, who's your favorite NFL player? Oh yeah, I definitely think I get some pumped up. They love the candy in the morning, and um, they just really enjoy seeing the high school kids here in the mornings on, on these Fridays. One of the best things to see are their smiles. <laughs> For PTV, this is Jet Johnson. We're going to start with orange. Because it's the color of a pumpkin. It's going to be like 20 times colder. I'm just gonna cover his face. Yeah, that's way colder. 
all <laughs> orange. Gotta get a lot of it on there. I can see how the slow it's coming out. Whoa, is my eye. Sorry, don't move. It's like. <laughs> <laughs> Not with the orange, do it with like a black or something. Well, you gotta cover your whole face in orange for the pumpkin, mm -hmm. and then you gotta draw the face. So, I think we're gonna start with some triangles. Ooh. Uh oh, hard, but. Okay, now we're gonna do a big old smiley face. I'm so scared you're gonna jab it into my eye. <laughs> okay. Mustache. I think it looks pretty good. You want a mustache? <laughs> Should I draw a stem with some green? How the heck are you gonna do a stem? Right there. Ooh. Oh no. Oh no. Okay. <laughs> I think it looks How good. How bad is it? Kaysen looks like quite the stylish jack-o'-lantern there. Well, it is the season of pumpkins, and even though it's a fun Halloween tradition to carve pumpkins, pumpkins actually have other benefits as well. That's what Mrs. Weizar's early years class learned recently, as you'll see in this next story. In Mrs. Weiser's early years class, they are making perfect pumpkin pancakes. Well, um, we started making them a few years ago just because it seemed like a fun seasonal addition to the things that we cook during Family Consumer Science. And then as we started studying more about them, we learned that there are many benefits of pumpkin. Although making the pancakes are fun, students have to learn what is healthy for the baby as well. They give you nutrients, they help boost your immune system, it helps prevent birth defects, it's a superfood, and it gives them the baby nutrition to survive. Um, there are so many nutrients in pumpkin that are good for a developing fetus and for a pregnant woman. One of the main things in pumpkin that's really important are the omega-3 fatty acids that come from it. Um, Omega-3s help all kinds of development, including things like the baby's brain, um, the spinal stem, which keeps infants from developing spina bifida as they're in the uterus. And so there are a lot of parts about the pumpkin that are very healthy for the infant. Pumpkin is always a favorite this time of year. I like pumpkin pie. It's very good to eat at Thanksgiving. I like everything pumpkin, but I love pumpkin muffins. Um, my family always has a big special request for a pumpkin roll at Thanksgiving time, but if someone were going to spoil me, that would be my teaching colleague, Kelly Nielsen, who makes a fabulous pumpkin white chocolate chip muffin. For PTV, this is Marissa Armit. Welcome back to the final segment of Hex Kitchen. We got our final contestant, Jet Johnson here. We'll see if someone can finally make a dirt cup right. All right, Jet, get started. Not a single person. Not a single person managed to crush yours right. Get back over here. Stop doing that, stop doing that. I'm gonna take over. I heard he had an ugly personality, but he's also ugly on the outside. Get out, get out. First, take that out. Put that in. Scoop the filling out. But I don't then, <laughs> you put it in there. You do not put the cream <laughs> with the Oreo. What? Did you just lick that? <laughs> yes. You're contaminating the food. <laughs> You're not even using, we have a whisk. We have a whisk. Use the whisk. A whisk or a spoon, they all do, are the same thing. I use what I want. Also, I don't like the cream on my Oreos. Absolutely. This is outlandish. <laughs> you know how to cook. And you know, dirt has like worms. I was always scared of the orange and red ones when I was little. I have no idea why. Chef Francie, this is the delightful dirt cup with some extra crumbs on the side. You know, I was judging you pretty harshly while making this. I thought it wasn't gonna come together. But in the end, with the destruction on left on the table, the bedrock at the bottom, it almost looks like winter on the side. 
with summer on the top. I gotta say, this is magnificent. This is quite possibly the best dirk I've ever seen. The other ones, I feel like I could give to kids in Africa and they wouldn't eat. I could serve this at my five-star hotel, plus kitchen, as I have. And it would be my star dish. Yeah, Johnson. I would like to thank you, personally. Thank you, Chef. Oh, I knew I'd win. I'm so proud of myself. I know how to make a dirt cup. The other contestants suck. Hallie, do you know what we celebrate in October? Well, Halloween's a big one, and then we have the fall weather, and K-State, who's gonna beat KU this weekend, and what else do you want? How about 4-H month? Oh, yeah, let's find out about that. During the first full week of October each year, extension agents, 4-Hers, and alumni come together to celebrate National 4-H Week. The thing I like the most about 4-H Sunday, the officers that we have that are outgoing officers, they have certain parts that they have to get up in front of the crowd and they uh, can practice their public speaking uh, at the event. It's also a great way to kick off our National 4-H uh, Week, the new 4-H year, if you will. My favorite part of 4-H Sunday is getting together with all the different 4-H families and then also learning about how 4-H connects back to the Bible and Jesus. 4-H Sunday is also an opportunity for fellowship between 4-Hers and alumni. It's special to come back as an alumni for 4-H is just getting to see everybody. Um, you know, everyone that I see here I've grown up with since I was about like seven years old. So it's just nice seeing everybody back here, uh, all here at my home church, and this is rewarding. In addition to 4-H Sunday, PHS 4-Hers celebrate National 4-H Week by visiting the elementary school to promote 4-H. People should join 4-H because it's a great leadership opportunity, and not only does it help you get out of your comfort zone, but it helps you learn new skills that you'll need in life. Teaching you leadership skills, uh, public speaking, um, but beyond just the professional status of 4-H, it's just making really good lifelong friends. Man, 4-H, 4-H is just a wonderful thing to do. For PTV, this is Lydia Walker. Do you know what the 4-H's and 4-H stand for? They stand for something? Um, head, heart, hands, and um, horses? No, it's health. I like horses a lot better. Well then, you just might enjoy this next story. Earlier this month, Kerwin had their annual horse show at Old Settlers Day. I feel like I did really good today. I had good runs all day today. There's always different events every year. We go, like, there's like the tr traditional barrel race, then you can have the poles, then there's always like new things people want to try that we always done. Some events require speed and precision. My favorite event was probably the flag race. Um, you, there's a barrel in the middle of the arena and there's a little tub with the flag in it. And you run down, go around the barrel and grab the flag and come back and just whoever has the fastest time wins. Not only do riders learn from this event, spectators enjoy it as well. I had fun today. It's always a fun time to come out here. It's a really relaxed uh, thing to do. Just nice to learn from other people. For PTV, this is Garrett Johnson. Pull your hair up. I'm not. <laughs> no. Pull it off. Pulls me a witch. Why is it white? <laughs> we might not be a good one, guys. I'm sorry. Rub it in, please. <laughs> <laughs> Give the outline. Oh! <laughs> Open your mouth. <laughs> Open your mouth. <laughs> no. Open your mouth. Oh my god. 
<laughs> Don't. <laughs> I'm not. I'm trying to get it because it won't come out. <laughs> Sorry, man, it's dripping. I gotta get it in the rest of the holes. <laughs> oh my god. Stop moving. <laughs> I'm done, I'm done. It's now time for our PTV Sports Update with James and Nate. Hey Panther fans, it's time for our PTV Sports Update. I'm Nathan Fisher. And I'm James Krausar. The tennis season has come to a close as the state tournament wrapped up last weekend. Congratulations to Valerie Solide for qualifying for state. She won her first match by upsetting the number 11 seed to player. Unfortunately, she lost her next two matches, which kicked her out of the medal contention, but she still represented Phillipsburg well. Before state and regionals, Phillipsburg hosted one last home event, the Mixed League Tournament. I was there to give you this report. On October 5th, the girls played at home in the MLC Tournament. We won our Mixed League Championship. Um, we were tied in team points, and our tie was with Osborne and we had a better win-loss percentage that day. The team ended up winning with each playing their best game, and here are the results. Um, Val Soliday got second place, Gabby Poles got first, and then both of our doubles teams took third place. The Lady Panthers thought the team played very well for their last game before regionals. Um, I think I played uh, pretty good today. Um, it was definitely a good day, and uh, just the whole team played really good. <laughs> Um, I've been watching them all day, and honestly, they've been doing really good considering our competition. For PTV, this is Nathan Fisher. Our volleyball team also hosted their league tournament last week. In pool play, the Lady Panthers first battled Smith Center and took care of business quickly in two sets, 25-23 to and 25-10. to After defeating Smith Center, up next were Phyllis Burgess Hoxie, who had beaten the Lady Panthers earlier that same week, but Peberg wasn't going to let that happen again. As Riley Seams gets this overpass kill to win the first set 25 to 19. And this right side block by Cameron Chestnut seals the deal in the second set as Phillipsburg wins 25 to 16. To finish pool play, the Panthers faced off against Team P and put up a strong fight winning the first set with plays like this outside attack by Kayla Jacobs and this ace by Jenna Storch. But the Monarchs won the next two sets of that match. Despite the loss, Phillipsburg advanced to the semifinals and had to play Norton. The Lady Panthers put up a fight with some strong serving, like this ace from Caitlin Rothy, and some strong defense with this dig from Jacobs, and a successful net joust by Burn Dillons. However, Norton would steal the momentum and the match. So then, Phillipsburg had to battle for third place against Russell. The Lady Panthers took care of business against the Broncos, with consistent plays at the net, like this outside attack by Callie Leidig, to extend the Panthers' lead in the first set. After winning the first set 25 to 15, Phillipsburg found themselves in a 16 to 16 tie, but then went on a five point streak to deflate the hopes of the Lady Broncos. The Lady Panthers win the second set 25 to 20 and claim third place medals for the tournament. Good job, ladies. James, do you smell something? Now that you mention it, yeah, I do. It kind of smells like some kind of chicken or cooked bird. Yeah, maybe it's just the cafeteria I'm smelling, but it does remind me of last Friday night's football game. You mean the game against the number one ranked 2A team just west of us on Highway 36? Yes, but you can just say Norton, because whether they're ranked or not, the Panthers are always pumped up and ready to play the Blue Jays. That was evident as Phillipsburg scored first when Seth Keaton pushed the ball over the end line for our first, of many, touchdowns. He did it again on the two-point try, and the Panthers went up 8-0. No one scored on their next possession, making it 8-7. But that's as close as it ever got, because then Phillipsburg went on another solid drive, which ended with this quarterback keeper by Colin Springer to go up 14-7. The two-point conversion was good, making it 16-7. In the second quarter, after another methodical offensive series, Tanner Horenic finds a clear lane on the outside edge for another touchdown to extend the lead 22-7. Norton answered with a drive of their own to make the score 22-13, but with one minute left in the second quarter, Caden Hudson bulldozed his way to the end zone for another Panther touchdown, making the score at halftime 28-13.
In the third quarter, the Panthers stay in control as Caden Hudson rushes for another touchdown, increasing the lead 34 to 13. In the fourth quarter, Phillipsburg adds more points to the board, but Hrennick finds the outside edge again and makes it to the end zone. With two and a half minutes left, Norton is able to shorten the gap 42 to 21. But then Alex Van Allen says, it's my turn, as he goes on a 53-yard sprint to the end zone for another Phillipsburg touchdown. Van Allen also tacked on two more points to make the final score 50 to 21. Nice work. The Panthers travel to Minneapolis tomorrow night to take on the Lions. Good luck to them. That's all the time we have for this sports update. I'm Nathan Fisher. And I'm James Krausar. Go Man. Before we end today's show, let's find out who won Frost and Monster. Wait a second, I'd like to join this competition. Ah, no, no, too late, leave me alone. I see here, it looks almost like uh, maybe we had a vampire clown is what it's looking like to me. Uh, Cole with his typical expression, they're very happy. Um, I'm going to give this, uh, with the blue, good job with the eyebrows, I'm going to give this a six. Okay, um, I feel like, I, I was a little confused at first, I didn't know if this was like lipstick that melted or what for sure, so um, I kind of can see the vampire, the teeth, um, so I'm going to go with a seven. It looks like Cole is the Joker instead of the vampire, so I think the effort was there, but I give him a six. Okay, uh, in the second one here, looks like we've got some type of a, a witch. At first it kind of struck me maybe as a Frankenstein. Um, I'm not exactly sure with the white, why we have some white mixed in with the green. Um, but I'll, I'll say just with the details, we'll go up one notch, we'll give that one a seven. I thought initially that this was the Incredible Hulk or something perhaps. Um, I don't totally get the witch vibe from this. Maybe a little Wizard of Oz happening, which I do happen to like the Wizard of Oz, but it's a little hulkish to me, so I'm gonna go with six. Okay, I like the green paint. I can see, but it looks more like Frankenstein, but I like the effort, so I give him a seven. Okay, and the last one here, uh, lots of details uh, with the jack-o'-lantern there. Uh, I really like the uh, curly Q mustache there. Um, it's a, a very nice fitting uh, edge to it there. Um, I think that's pretty impressive, and the fact that they put four thumbs up, we gotta give them a 10 right there. That's a 10 right there. I'm feeling the sibling love here. Um, this looks like something that they may have done when they were little together, cut up jack-o'-lanterns, um, decorated them. Um, I'm impressed with you know the eyes, the little curly things around the mouth. Um, she even has the stem coming out of the head. So I'm gonna go ahead and give this one a nine. Uh, that is, I love the little green stem, makes him look like a unicorn, but I know what it is. That's a, that's a jack lantern. I give him a 10. Perfection. That wraps up this episode of PTV. I'm Lydia Walker. And I'm Hallie Jerby. Stay classy, Foldsburg High.
supposed to be. Well, Michael. Cootie patootie, well here you go. Here's the candy for you. Now get off the wall. Sorry, this is for me. 